Hi, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this tutorial, I'm going to teach you all about masking, keying, and using the pen tool in Adobe Premiere Pro. So I've got some sample clips open on my timelines, and if you ever highlight a clip and go to the Effect Controls panel, you'll always see these three little icons, the ellipse, four-point polygon, and pen tool, or the free draw, whenever you are able to mask. So in this case, they're under the opacity effect, and that'll be kind of like the visibility of the entire clip. These, this is your default mask of the opacity of the whole clip. But also, if you ever add an effect onto a clip, so let's say I add a directional blur onto this clip and increase the, the strength, then whenever, you also have these options whenever you have an effect. So if I add a circular mask on this Gaussian blur or directional blur, then you'll see the effect only shows through where the mask is created. And whereas if I add an effect on the opacity, then the opacity of the clip is only visible where the mask is created. So just a slight distinction there, you can have multiple different masks upon different effects. And whenever you have a mask open, you have a few options. So you'll see mask one has been created here. You can always rename it to be whatever you want, but you know, whenever you add a mask or add another mask on top, It'll just keep going from mask one, two, three. You can have multiple masks on the same clip, but the way that intersecting areas are handled are usually just by combining the two to show through. For example, if I have this circle, circle, and square, they all show through. But if I, if I click invert, it won't necessarily find the opposite edge of both the circles, if you know what I mean. So you can use stacking masks to create unique cutout shapes, but it doesn't always, it won't always be able to cut out in the way that you want. But I'm going to delete, highlight and delete those masks. Whenever you highlight a mask, it will bring up the original bounding boxes for you to move around with. And whenever you're in the program window, not the reference window, you can see that those blue dots and move them around. So these visuals here are just showing you all the anchor points. I have four on this ellipse here. And I can move each one of them individually. And I also have a couple other little pull tabs on this, these anchor points. So this one here adjusts the feathering. You'll see the softness of the edge. You can also adjust that in the effect controls panel with the sliders. This one here affects the mask expansion. So you can expand it out or in. Again, and you can do that with the sliders as well. That's really useful for when you have outlined an image or object and you just need to bring it a little bit out or in to fully capture the edge. And you can also rotate your mask. So you can move it around. If you pull your mouse so that it's kind of on the edge, but not really, it'll allow you to rotate your mask. And you can also add points. So if I add a point there and want to make it look more like a heart shape or something, I can add custom points and move them around. Now, let's switch over to the pen tool if we're going to start talking about anchor points. So you have the circle, you have the four point polygon starting point. So these are both really useful starting points for you to move around, especially because many objects are rectangular or circular. But let's say for an object like this balloon, I want to use something like the pen tool. Here I can, I have my pen tool and I can just start at a point. So if I start at this corner, then I can move along and create another point. But you see there's a slight curve to this balloon. So if I hold that point, click and hold, I can drag out these little anchor lines so that we can bend and curve a line. So for example, let's move this point over here. I can just slowly begin to wrap around certain edges like so and get a, a clean curve. I can move the point to whatever makes it work. Now a really useful point is whenever you do see these two anchor points, you can pull on them to affect the curve of, of the line. But if you hold option, you can pull on just one or the other line. This is really useful for when you go really far in one direction, but you need to bring it back in line so that you can continue forward. 
So for example, if I wanted to just, if I just kept going here, using the pen tool does take time to master. Um, you you kind of get a feel for how it works. It could probably get a little frustrating if you're just beginning. But if you are just beginning, then I'd recommend trying to cover smaller areas at once of whatever shape or object you're going. But let's say we come to the end of a of our line and I also want to mask out the, these rocks. It might be difficult because we've already curved the end and it's going to do this wild curve to get back to this point. So if I press Command Z to undo that last point, a really useful tool to remember is you have the ability to zoom in. So you can zoom all the way up to 400% in. So you can really see the edge. And like I was saying, if I curved a lot on this last point, I can hold Option, take that tail end, bring it back to normal, and then I can just continue working along and make a really sharp turn without really worrying where I was. So this is going to depend on your clip, but you know, in my case, I don't even really want to do that. I was just showing that for an example. And there doesn't always have to be a curvature to every anchor point you do. If it's just a straight line, you can simply make dots. And the mask closes when you see this little circle will let you know that you're going to connect and finish your mask and then it'll actually show you the results of your mask. So by default it does have this feather. If you want to see what it looks like without the blue line so you can really see your edge, just kind of click on the timeline or deselect the mask. And now you can see your edge and you can go back to fit mode or 100% mode. And you can adjust the feather to be stronger or sharper. You can adjust the expansion if you messed up a little bit or overshot your edge. And with those tools, you can get a pretty solid selection. Now, keep in mind that this clip, as the camera moves, the camera shakes and the balloon is moving a little bit, our mask kind of moves out of place. This is where you do have some basic tracking options in Premiere. So if you press on this mask path option, if you, if you ever click this toggle animation stopwatch icon, it'll add a keyframe on that point. And if I move forward, I see that my mask has fallen out of place. I can try to manually move the whole thing. And, and I can even manually adjust points as I need to if things were morphing and, or growing and expanding. And Premiere will interpolate those points and animate them. There is also, if I undo, there is also this basic tracking option. So you can track the selected mask forward Premiere will automatically try to detect the motion of basic position movements. Uh, it doesn't really work as well as After Effects, but it will try to go frame by frame and track the mask based on the current frame that you have. So you see it's created all these keyframes and for a simple movement like this, it's done a pretty decent job. If I wanted to do it the other way as well, I can use this go to previous keyframe button, kind of just get on that first keyframe and then track the selected mask backwards because we didn't start in the very first frame just for this example. And it'll try to do a decent job. So in this case, we've done a pretty good job masking out the shape of this balloon. And although you see black, what you actually see is zero opacity or transparency underneath. If you ever click this wrench icon in the program window, you can choose to show transparency kind of more familiar if you're, if you're used to Photoshop. And then if I was to put some other clip underneath, so if I put these on two different layers, put another clip underneath, this is how you can composite two different images by masking one and then putting something else on the top. Alternatively, I can also invert this mask and now we can kind of fill in the balloon with some other video or image. And this is where some of that mask expansion might come in handy so that I don't see the edge of the balloon and I adjust the feather. Another tip with the being able to zoom in and out of the mask is like sometimes the you want to be able to click a point, but it's outside your program window and you can't really reach it because your object kind of goes outside the frame. That is when you can use lower percentages like 50 or 75%. So if I was creating a mask 
that I needed to go outside the frame a little bit to fill in, that's where you want, might want to zoom out as well. Keep that in mind. Now, that's just one option on how to cut things out. Um, it can get really tedious if you're talking about cutting out a person where they're moving their head left and right or they're swinging their arms around. You really don't want to be doing that sort of tedious masking in Premiere Pro if you can avoid it. That's much better suited to After Effects because it has rotoscoping and tracking tools that are much more capable to automatically do, do things. That would be very tedious frame by frame work for hundreds of frames if you wanted to if you're trying to do it in Premiere. This works better in Premiere for simple shapes and lines that you can track with maybe a handful of keyframes over time or that the basic tracking tools in Premiere are able to handle. Another option for you though, whenever you're thinking about how do I cut out this object, is to keep in mind that not only do you have masking options, but you also have keying options in your keying effects folder. So this is something like a green screen. Like if you had a green screen video, many times, uh, even if you're not using a green screen, there is really good contrast between the subject of your image and the background to the point where you can just do something like a luma key or a color key. Luma key is based on the brightness. So if I was to look at this clip, we see there's a clear difference between the bright sky and the dark rocks and even the balloon. There's a clear contrasted edge. If I added a luma key on this, then I could adjust the threshold and the cutoff percentages until we get a pretty decent cutout. Now there's some vignetting around the edges because it get, does get darker again around the edges. This and this are kind of the same color or brightness. And this is where you might want to combine a luma key and a mask. So maybe I just do a rough outline this time. Remember, zoom out if I want to be able to go outside of the bounds easily. And maybe let's say I even, I just kind of want to do a sky replacement here. I can keep most of the work that the Luma key has done. And I'll zoom in for when I can't kind of get in those points without that I need, that I need to. And now I have a combination of this mask and the Luma key, which we've roughly cut out to what do we want, and then we use a key to clean up those edges. As you can see, it's a lot faster than what we were doing before. I still want to watch out because now that mask that I've created is might need to be animated a little bit. So don't try not to to complicate and add masks when you don't need to, because remember, masks are static; they don't. They're not animated by default, whereas many video clips and objects are. But now if I was to add something in the background of this, same idea. We've, we've done a sort of sky replacement effect. If you have something more like a green screen or with something like a really solid color, you can use a color key. So in this case, I can color this mint green. I can increase the tolerance. And I can get a pretty good cutout of our person without having to use the pen tool at all. Now I might want to do another color key on top because the, there's this dark green shadow as well. So I'll ink dropper that. Get even more tolerance. Maybe add a little bit of feather. And here's where then I would maybe just add a simple rectangular mask so I can avoid all the rest of that stuff. But remember, I might want to animate this mask path like right here. This window still starts to creep in. I can animate it. His, his arm starts to move. I can animate it a little bit. And we've done a pretty decent job cutting this guy out of the wall. So Again, now I can just stack other things underneath or on top. And it doesn't look perfect because this just doesn't make any sense. But if it were cropped or positioned in a different way, then it could start to be composited with different effects to make it make more sense. This is also how you can do text or shapes uh, revealing or disappearing behind objects. So if I have this text layer 
and I place this layer underneath that masked out layer. This is how text kind of can show or hide itself, or you can even mask out text so that it gets wiped away by a linear object or wipe, as well as custom shapes that you've created or lower thirds or whatever. So I have separate tutorials on my channel uh, about text reveal or text behind objects if you want more ideas on that. But this has been a pretty general overview of masking and keying options for you to get to creatively problem solve these sort of things when you're working from your pro. And just remember, if it gets super complicated, that's when you might want to jump over to After Effects, which I have tutorials about doing rotoscoping and cutting things out in After Effects as well. So if you want to check all those out, there's a bunch of playlists on my channel with hundreds of videos. You can subscribe here on YouTube to stay tuned for all my new ones. My name is Justin Odisho. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.